Hello and welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Have you been participating in the Child Month calendar of activities? Well, for today, Monday, May 15, you should encourage your child to speak up if they are being bullied or feel they might be in danger. If you haven't done so yet, don't worry. Now is the right time to start. for great things this season and I know you believe it within your very core and so we have committed to continue the support behind you and in front of you and beside you so that you can excel and you can do well and you can be your best self. I'm unstoppable. I'm a fortune with no brains. I'm invincible. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, May 15, 2023. Government will be allocating another $1 billion in the 2024-25 fiscal year to support the development of small community-based municipal water projects. This is in addition to the $7 billion worth of water projects planned for this fiscal year. The announcement was made by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in Parliament last week. Mr. Holness says the Minister with Responsibility for Water, Senator Matthew Samuda, will be contacting rural members of Parliament who have small projects. This will include the entombments that communities would put up to you know, create a little embankment of water in a river to rehabilitate tanks that are in communities that may have fallen into disrepair to build catchment areas and uh, to put in small pumping areas. Mr. Holness adds that while the money will be available next year, the work to implement the project starts now. You have to select the project, you have to do the engineering, you have to do the procurement of the materials. By the time all of that is done, you are in the next budget cycle ready for implementation. And of course, even though these are small projects, many of them would still have to go through the public investment assessment process. So, we have to start no. Meanwhile, Mr. Holness is encouraging Jamaicans to conserve water in light of the ongoing meteorological drought affecting the island. $10 million will be spent this financial year to strengthen the country's cybersecurity framework. That announcement comes from the Minister of Science, Energy and Technology, Daryl Vaz. Pointing out that the prevalence of cyber attacks is one of the greatest existential threats, he explains that the global outlook sees associated costs rising as high as 8 trillion US dollars. In light of that, the technology minister says government must do what it can to form a bastion of cyber support around the nation. Commencing in the financial year, the ministry will be allocated a sum of 6.5 million US dollars in loans and 3.5 million US dollars in grants through a project jointly funded by the IDB and USAID to strengthen Jamaica's cybersecurity framework. In, additional, in addition, through technical cooperation, it is anticipated that the country could benefit from an additional 500,000 US dollars for cybersecurity policy and legislation. Mr. Vaz reveals that the budgetary allocation for the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team, JASSERT, has been increased by $20 million. This increased allocation will ensure that the following operational objectives are implemented. A coordination of public-private partnerships, focus on identification, analysis and mitigation of risk from fiber and physical threats to internet-facing resources, national critical information and infrastructure, and national critical, info national critical infrastructure. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is spending 31% more than last fiscal year on capital health projects. The 2023 expenditure is $6.4 billion, and Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says this significant increase represents government's continued commitment to upgrading Jamaica's health infrastructure. During his recent sectoral presentation in Parliament, Dr. Tufton said this included the 250-bed Western Child and Adolescent Hospital that has advanced to the fifth floor. 
$450 million has so far been spent through grant funding from the People's Republic of China. The Spanish Town Hospital, long overdue for major overhaul, Madam Speaker, is scheduled to break ground in Ju on July 2023 at a contract price of some $6.4 billion to be spent over the next two years. In addition, rehabilitation work on the Cornwall Regional Hospital, which has an associated cost of $14 billion, has reached its third and final phase. Final phase will commence in a month or two. There's a $14 billion expenditure associated with that, and that means the internals, and we expect that we will begin to reoccupy the main building by the end of this year. The Phase 3 contract work is expected to be completed in 2024. Meanwhile, work to reroute the Ring Road and clear the site for a new state-of-the-art seven-story building at the University Hospital of the West Indies is to be completed soon. We have gone to tender. I understand that that process is to be completed soon for reworking the Ring Road, expanding it, clearing the site for a greenfield building valued at some 30 million U.S. dollars. Jamaica will chair the Council for Foreign and Community Relations, COFCOR, of CARICOM for one year starting this month. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith will take up the chairmanship position. As part of the responsibilities, the ministry will be hosting the 26th meeting of the COFCOR on May 16 and 17 in Jamaica. This will be followed immediately by a meeting of the United Kingdom Caribbean Forum on May 18 and the inaugural Jamaica-UK Strategic Dialogue on May 19. The 26th regular meeting will engage, therefore, on coordinating or seeking to coordinate regional positions on issues including candidatures, ministerial meetings which are upcoming, bilateral and bi-regional relations with extra-regional partners, the situation in Haiti, multilateral and hemispheric relations in the context of the UN, the OAS, the CELAC, and the Association of Caribbean States. We will also be treating with climate change and various, uh, uh, various matters related to, of course, climate action and climate financing. Among the guests for the collective events are the State Minister of Foreign Affairs of Japan, Secretary of State from Spain, Secretary General of CARICOM, and Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom. And finally, the Ministry of Agriculture is welcoming the expected increase in the supply of baby chickens to small poultry farmers with the expansion of the Jamaica Best Dressed Chicken Hatchery. Local farmers account for 30% of the country's poultry meat production. The expanded facility, which was officially opened last week, will increase its capacity for hatching and table eggs by 70%. Agriculture Minister Pernell Charles Jr. says this will give the country a competitive advantage when dealing with market volatility. During his tour of the Jamaica Best Dressed Chicken Hatchery, the minister hailed the growth as another positive milestone for Jamaica. As a vertically integrated organization, we want to just continue to encourage Jamaica broilers to be the, the kind of constructive citizen that you have been in this country. Uh, we want to continue to encourage you to, to be committed to the partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. According to CEO of the Jamaica Broilers Group, Christopher Levy, the company invested approximately $200 million in the expansion of the plant. This investment is a state-of-the-art hatchery. The equipment is amazing and um, we're very excited to see the results out of it. But more than anything, this is an investment in the small farmers of our country. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with a heart. And that's why good heart health and taking care of this vital organ is so important for hearty living. Anna, you know you're special, very, very special to me, Anna. 
Yes, Mom, I know. And today, I want to have a special conversation with you about taking care of your body. Okay, Ma, what do you mean? All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, taking care of a very special part of your body, and that's your heart. Do you feel the heart beating? Yes, I'm going to talk to you about taking care of your heart. Oh, I see. Yes, I learned about the heart in school. Wow, you're so smart. You normally go unaware of it beating 100,000 times per day as you move about. But what if it stopped and you could have prevented that? This complex and delicate organ is responsible for pumping the blood supply that carries oxygen and the nutrients needed for your body to function properly. It's time to stop and find out what you need to do to keep your heart beating. Professor Ernest Madu is an internationally recognized nuclear cardiologist, as well as the founder and chairman of the Heart Institute of the Caribbean. He tells us what is normal in heart health. If you're looking for what is a normal heart rate, it's usually, we say it's about 60 to 100 beats per minute. Uh, normal blood pressure, we want to keep it systolic, the top one. The, it should be around 120 and the bottom one should be less than 70. Those will be what we'll consider normal. Uh, if it's high, it's hypertension. If it is low, it's hypotension. Uh, so very high blood pressure is not good. Very low blood pressure can also cause problems. Uh, a very high heart rate is a problem. Very low heart rate is also a problem. It's only about the size of a fist but has a huge responsibility as it bears the weight of supporting all the other organs in the body. To practice good heart health, you will first need to understand the risks of having a bad heart. Cardiovascular diseases, including heart disease and stroke, are the commonest cause of death and disability in Jamaica. We estimate, uh, just from our own um, studies we estimate that perhaps more than 7,500 people have a heart attack every year in Jamaica the first time and then about half of that number have a second heart attack. Many people with heart attack will not survive unless appropriate intervention happen in a timely manner. Leading the cause factors for poor heart health is obesity and preconditions such as diabetes and hypertension. The call remains loud for people to take seriously the lifestyle changes that support hearty living. Parents are encouraged to develop this culture in their children. Parents must adequately inform themselves because you can't train somebody what you don't know. Encourage your children to get out of the house and be active and exercise and Watch your children, what they eat, and make sure their weight is ideal. And begin early to train the children on the ways, the habits that they need to form early in life, you know, that can help to keep their risk for heart disease at bay. Research in the field of cardiology is growing, providing more information to help us make wise choices for our heart health. One of the major causes of heart failure, especially in black people, that is recognized now is called cardiac amyloidosis. And it used to be almost universally fatal, but now there are treatment options and there are diagnostic mechanisms for this. We're working with Yale University to launch that project here in Jamaica. So there's been a mountain of advances happening, whether it's cardiac imaging, personalized uh, medicine, uh, genomic uh, treatment strategies, remote patient monitoring. On a personal level, Jamaicans are being urged to get active and do regular medical checkups. We also have to be mindful about the role of exercise and physical activity in protecting ourselves from heart disease and other non-communicable ailments that are associated with 
sedentary lifestyles or inactivity. Um, the Minister of Health, Dr. Tufton, has been aggressive in pushing you know, Jamaicans to get out and exercise. And I think that is a step in the right direction. Early detection is very important. You know, we need to recognize that the idea that every pain is gas is not helpful. You know, when people feel that discomfort, they need to seek medical attention. Mom, so what can I do to take care of my heart? So Anna, you know you have to exercise. So like praying that you always do. And also Anna, I need you to start eating those veggies, even the ones that you don't like. And I need you to go to bed on time as well. And guess what? Never forget to laugh, all right? Never forget to laugh. And you must not forget these tips, all right, Anna? You must take this throughout your life. Thank you so much for this talk, Mom. I will never forget it. All right, my sweet Anna. They're known for their health benefits and calming effects, and it's little wonder the demand for essential oils is increasing daily. But a new incubator operated by the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, is changing Jamaica's relationship with these oils. No longer are we only consumers, but the possibility of being producers using local products is endless. Essential oils are basically extracts made by steaming or pressing various parts of a plant, such as the flowers, bark, leaves, or fruit, to capture the components that produce fragrance. Increasing use and demand for these oils offer significant possibilities for entrepreneurship and wealth creation. And more Jamaicans now have the opportunity to tap into this income stream through the newly created Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, Essential Oils Incubator. The Essential Oil Project presents an opportunity for manufacturers across diverse industries such as food processing, fragrance and cosmetic. The global essential oils market is growing steadily and according to markets and markets research, it is projected to earn 15.3 billion US dollars in 2027 up from its current market size of 8.8 .8 billion US dollars. To secure a slice of this pie, planning and implementation for the JBDC's Essential Oils Incubator project began in 2021. It followed a review by the Public Investment Management Secretariat, PIMSEC, and approval by the Cabinet. The project seeks to stimulate more local entrepreneurship development and support for rural and vulnerable communities import substitution and promotion of export. So we actually got 15 million as seed money to set up the incubator. And that for us was a major achievement. Farmers growing plant materials for the essential oils industry can now utilize the facility to add value to their production and even more. This is another firm indication of the government's push to develop the value chain in agriculture and to strengthen our non-traditional industries. The impact of increased homemade products will be significant in reversing the current trend, where about 80% of essential oils used locally is imported. We need to reduce our import bill. There's no doubt about that. So why don't we provide for the needs of our own people by using what we have. Why not? The model being promoted entails, one, a facility that provides incubator space 
for use by clients who will process their own raw materials, stimulating entrepreneurship within and in their surrounding communities. Two, capacity building to be targeted to our processors. This group will benefit from trainings in product development, good manufacturing practices, supply chain management, and business development skills. The JBDC Essential Oils Incubator is a 2,400 square foot facility. It is equipped with amenities for washing, chopping and sizing raw materials, as well as steam distillation units of varying capacities. It also boasts a manual and an electrical 20-liter hydraulic press for mechanical extraction. This is useful for persons doing cold press oil. There is also a peristalatic filler and a small laboratory equipped to do some of the standard tests required on essential oils that will be produced in the space. And when we say from concept to market, which is our byline, it means that the whole value chain have opportunities and we want the oil to work to get all the wheels turning so that we really have full benefit at the end of the day. Projections are that 4,500 people will be impacted by the end of the four-year cycle of this particular project. In Jamaica, we have the raw material for the oils, which are in high demand. Ginger, turmeric, lemongrass, pimento, castor oils, coconut oil. Demand for these products is being fueled by an increased perception amongst consumers of the health benefits, therapeutic and otherwise. Some plant-derived essential oils are said to have antibacterial and antifungal properties. And there are those used for aromatherapy to treat a wide range of conditions, including anxiety, pain, and insomnia. So farmers consider how you can take advantage of this new facility that JBDC is making available and engage them for the necessary partnership. They are providing the facility as well as training on good manufacturing processes, supply chain management, and business development skills. It's not just growing. Growing is that primary production. You get the lease from primary production. The opportunity for business along the value chain extends from just farming the raw materials to operating a processing facility, supplying equipment and packaging, transportation, warehousing, and marketing. And if any of this strikes your passion, rest assured the JBDC is ready to take you from concept to market. Is that single piece of document that provides a variety of functions in our society. It tells us who we are, where and when we were born, and to whom we were born. And for most of us, the birth certificate helps us to acquire certain benefits. With how important this piece of document is, it's clearly very crucial to have one. We'll tell you how to get a birth certificate in this next feature. The Registrar General's Department, RGD, is an executive agency and Jamaica's sole repository of birth records. Every birth that occurs in Jamaica must be registered with the RGD. This establishes a permanent and official record of each person's existence, where they were born, and the identity of their parents. This affords the individual the right to an official identity and nationality, which is also the basis for accessing social and economic benefits. The registration process typically begins shortly after the mother gives birth in hospital or a birthing facility where the relevant form is completed by a registration officer. The process is complete once all relevant signatures are affixed to the document and the registration fee is paid. Some parents are required to do a follow-up visit with the RGD for one or more reasons. If the couple is unmarried, they may have to visit to have the father's particulars added to the form. If a child's name was not decided at birth, the parent must submit a certification of naming form. 
The birth certificate will be issued within three months for babies who were named in the hospital. Where the registration of birth is done digitally, the RGD also has the capacity to provide digital birth certificates so that parents will be able to leave the hospital with the document. Beyond bedside registration, to get a birth certificate, you must apply to the Registrar General's department. This can be done online at www.rgd.gov.jm or by visiting any of the RGD's offices across the country. When applying, ensure that you have the following information for the person or child on whose behalf you are seeking the birth certificate. The full and correct spelling of the person's name, their sex, date, and place of birth, as well as the parish. You also need the birth entry number, full and correct spelling of the person's mother and father's names, date, and place of registration. If you don't have a birth entry number, you will need to fill out an online birth search application form. The birth entry number is on the top right-hand corner of the birth certificate, usually two letters and three or four numbers if you have an old one, and on the certificate of registry or the pink slip. Complete the application form and make the required payment for either the express or regular service using your credit or visa debit card. The Registrar General's Department lists the costs for getting a certified copy of a birth certificate on its website. The current price to get the first copy is 1,500 Jamaican dollars. Additional copies will cost $500 each. Normally, it takes anywhere between six and eight weeks to process a birth certificate application. However, you can make use of the RGD's 7 to 10 business days express service or 3 to 4 business days express service. If you are overseas, you also have the option of asking a family member or friend in Jamaica to assist you with getting the birth certificate. This option is usually less costly and tends to be the fastest route. Express applications for overseas customers are processed within 7 to 10 business days and ordinary applications are processed within 4 to 6 weeks. All overseas customers will receive two copies of the certificate at costs based on the region in which they reside. If the child was delivered at home or any place outside of a hospital or birthing center, the parents must visit the RGD with an informant, that is, a witness or household member, to register the birth. Ideally, this should take place within six weeks of the birth or up to a year, the latest. Persons who fail to register their children's birth within the specified year will have to complete a late registration form. This then creates a record of the birth which is needed before making an application for a birth certificate. Among the information required for completing the late registration form are your child's first primary or prep school records, baptismal record, three statutory declarations, a list of all children born to the mother, and a certificate of naming. A late registration fee of $6,000 is charged for processing in four to six weeks and $8,500 for 7 to 10 business days. Parents will be interviewed as part of the application process and will receive a birth certificate when the process is completed with the standard RGD service cost and processing time applied. Thank you so much for being with us today on Jamaica Magazine. So glad you could have joined us. Do join us again tomorrow for another interesting journey. And of course, you can visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for more news you can use. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you so much for watching and pleasant viewing. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.